the time now, 6.31. This is a live look from the Weatherstem camera looking over Dope Campbell Stadium out there. Very interesting view. Mm -hmm. It, it kind of looks a little lighter than usual it's, it, out well, there. We're getting to that point, right? We're, al oh. we're almost to May. We're almost going to get the sun coming up before 7 o'clock soon. Okay. So we, we've made up the hour that we, we sprung forward. Right, so, right. Uh, okay. It's happening, my friends. It is. But it looked nice out there. It is. But it's kind of cold this morning, uh, Rob. You want jackets? <laughs> sweatshirts this it's morning cold. you do uh, it'll warm up just fine and I think we're in for a really nice day the forecast is going to continue to be every bit as nice as it was yesterday and maybe even nicer for some depending on what it is that you like now if you like the cooler stars you love this 44 in Tallahassee 45 and Live Oak 46 in Bainbridge Valdosta we're at 43 I don't expect tomorrow morning to be as cool as this morning tomorrow morning will be mostly numbers in the 50s nothing much on the radar there isn't going to be not around here anytime soon I do see showers out across areas well to our west. I'm talking Arkansas and Missouri and maybe even northern parts of Louisiana, but all that is moving to the north and away from our part of the southeast. So for us, I see all kinds of sunshine in this forecast and real pleasant temperatures this afternoon. A little warmer than it was yesterday. I think we've got a better chance to get closer to 80. I'll break it down full forecast in just a couple of minutes. We start this half hour in Lowndes County, where sheriff's deputies say they have found a man who had been shot and lying dead in the road. Few details are being released, but LCSO says deputies discovered the body of a black man partially laying on Club Road in South Lowndes County. This happened around 8 a.m. They're asking anyone with information to call the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office at 229-671. 2900. In Tallahassee, police confirming that a shooting on Talco Hills Drive is connected to a chase and crash on Getty Road. A spokeswoman telling us that officers got a description of a suspected shooter's car, spotted it, and chased it to Getty Road and Bluntstown Highway. TPD saying they saw the car crash into another and then keep going. A woman is now in custody connected to the case. We'll continue to follow this story as new information comes in. Covering Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis signing a higher education reform bill into law yesterday. Governor DeSantis in Central Florida yesterday saying the state's higher education institutions were ranked number one according to the prestigious U.S. News and World Report rankings the last five years. He says these reforms aim to make it even better. Very important because you have some of these kids have been told like you have to get this magic piece of paper, otherwise you can't possibly succeed in life. And so what that has led is for students to go very deep into debt. And look, if you get an engineering degree from MIT, you're probably going to be okay dealing with that debt. But if you end up at some fourth tier college and, and do zombie studies and end up with five years, six years and 100,000, 150,000 in debt, under the, the new law, tenured faculty will be reviewed every five years by the Board of Governors. The board will consider such things as accomplishments, productivity, performance metrics, and compensation. The new law takes effect July 1st. A special legislative session is underway at Florida's Capitol. Lawmakers working on redrawing congressional voting districts. The proposed map from the DeSantis administration shrinks two of the state's four districts that have black representatives and tilts the overall balance of seats further toward Republicans. As Savannah Kelly reports, hundreds of protesters gathered outside as lawmakers began debating. And that is wrong. As the Florida legislature convenes for a special session to discuss DeSantis's new congressional map, protesters gather at the Capitol, arguing that his map silences black voters. We have fought for so many years for our rights, but we still have those that want to eliminate us, ignore us, make us feel like we're not a part of this great country when it has literally been built on our backs. Out of 27 congressional seats right now, only four are held by black representatives. Opponents argue DeSantis's new map could reduce that to two. We have a voice. 
we want to keep that voice. Leon County Commissioner Bill Proctor is worried about the impact on the capital city, which would no longer be partially represented by Congressman Al Lawson. Under the new map, Tallahassee would become a solely Republican district. This is shocking, horrifying. DeSantis argued in a press conference last week that his goal is to fix what he sees as racial gerrymandering in Al Lawson's District 5, which stretches from Quincy to Jacksonville, encompassing black voters in those areas. It will, though, have uh, North Florida drawn in a race-neutral manner. But speakers today say race neutrality doesn't exist. Our governor calls that, again, racial, race-neutral. But we all know what that means. Yeah. White. All right, so the special session ends Friday. The legislator is expected to approve the governor's map. Opponents are promising to fight it in court. 637 now in national news. New mask freedoms might not be lasting too long. The Justice Department says it could appeal a federal judge's ruling that struck down the transportation mask mandate. It says it's letting the CDC decide what happens next. Amy Kiley has more. Actually, the battle over the federal public transportation mask mandate might not be over yet. The Justice Department says it's deferring to the CDC about appealing a federal judge's ruling that struck down the measure Monday. Should people continue to wear masks on planes? That's up to them. The CDC had wanted the mandate in place until at least May 3rd while it determined if it was still needed. It's a horrible time uh, to lift uh, the mandate. Experts say it's important to remember COVID-19 is still deadly. Omicron has killed about 150,000 people. In an average year with a seasonal virus like the flu, we lose somewhere between 30 to 50,000 people. Officials say a new sub-lineage of BA2 spreads about 25% faster than the original sub-variant. Together, they make up almost all new COVID-19 cases in the U.S. Experts also point out people can't always social distance when traveling together. If someone's not wearing a mask, even if you're wearing a very high quality mask like this, an N95 mask, they're infected. You have about an hour, hour and 15 minutes of protection. But people who aren't health experts might be considering other factors. I feel more protected when people are wearing masks, though the enforcement of it causes a lot of antagonistic situations. I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more smiles. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Time now for First Alert Weather with meteorologist Rob Nucatola. And we've got a lovely forecast on tap for today. It is starting a little cool out there. Sweatshirts or light jackets are going to be important early, but they'll come off by lunchtime as temperatures climb through the 70s. And I think we've got a shot to get near 80. I don't expect it to be as chilly tomorrow morning as we start to warm things up on both sides of the day. This morning, it's 43 at Quincy. It's 44 in Tallahassee and Camilla and Tifton. Valdosta, we're at 43. How about 45s for Thomasville, for Perry, and for Live Oak? Now, the breeze is trying to turn more towards the northeast and east. It will eventually turn more towards the east and southeast, and that'll slowly start to bring in some warmer and more humid air. I don't see a lot of fog out there this morning. I don't expect to find fog. Not today, not tomorrow, but maybe by Friday and the weekend as the air moistens up a little bit, we get a little bit of patchy fog. Not much going on across our part of the southeast. There are clouds and showers way out to the west, but that's likely where most of that's going to stay riding around this ridge of high pressure. That'll be our big weather player still for another couple of days, and it's what's been responsible for the drier air and for that breeze, and I do think we'll notice that breeze at times today. But no new energy, no new systems coming into our part of the southeast, and that means no major changes to our forecast. We'll start to notice maybe some of those puffy white clouds. We'll also start to notice things warming up a little bit over the next few days. But that's about it. Those thirsty lawns, gardens, and greens got their drink Sunday, Monday. They need a couple of days to dry out. They're going to get that. But by the upcoming weekend, as things start to get a little bit warmer with all the sunshine, they'll start to get thirsty again. Maybe we can find some rain next week. I don't think we're going to find any for the remainder of this week or the upcoming weekend. Small crafts be advised winds out of the east 12 to 24 and seas may be up high near five feet. Those winds should relax a little bit over the next couple of days. It's 40s this morning, clear and cool. Sun comes up after seven o'clock. Lots of sunshine all day. Let's shoot for 80 for a daytime high. I think we can get there. 
Tonight it'll be back in the mid 50s. Sunset time is 808. Lots of clear, lots of comfortable. And then notice how the temperatures change. Tomorrow afternoon, we should get into the 80s without any trouble. Friday, probably going to get to the mid 80s and starting near 60 this weekend. The afternoon temperatures are going to get a little warm. We're talking mid 80s and higher. They may climb for the first part of next week.